across the country. Yes, the country's health ministry said at least nine are dead and more than 2,700 people were wounded. Some viewers might find this following footage disturbing. This appears to be a sophisticated remote attack. Hezbollah said several hundred members of the terrorist group were wounded when their tankers exploded. Iran's ambassador was also among those wounded. This happened in Beirut's suburbs and other parts of Lebanon. The health ministry called on the public to stop using their handheld devices. They said large numbers of people are arriving at the hospitals. No one yet claimed responsibility for the explosions. The incident comes at a time of heightened tension between Lebanon and Israel. Hezbollah has suggested that Israel is the one behind the explosions, but of course the Israeli military has declined to comment so far. It's unclear right now how the papers were detonated exactly. Job keeping any threats away. We are always concerned as far as um, President Trump's safety, and we pray that he is safe at all times. Um, we pray for everybody here that their safety is at 100%. I feel that um, we're being protected, um, and God will take care of us. I am concerned about Donald Trump's safety, but I believe God has his back. He showed it twice that he has his back. And I pray he continues to have his back. When he says he believes in America, he does believe in America. And Americans need to start believing in ourselves again. In a press conference today, House Speaker Mike Johnson said that Congress will expand the scope of a task force to look into the attempted assassination on Trump. Secret Service has dropped the ball, and it's inexcusable. We have a task force that has been investigating the events of Butler, Pennsylvania. As uh, our Congress Chair, at least Stefanik, noted, we're going to expand the scope of the task force to look into the events that happened in Florida on Sunday as well. The FBI says it's investigating suspicious packages sent to election officials in more than a dozen states on Monday. The agency said an unknown substance, substance was being examined from some of the letters that were received. Officials in Colorado, New York, Georgia, and Iowa were among those that were targeted. Hmm. This comes less than two months ahead of the general election, with early voting already underway in some states. NTD's Jeremy Sandberg has the latest on this investigation. The FBI and the U.S. Postal Inspection Service are working to find the origins of more than 15 suspicious packages sent to election officials on Monday. States include New York, Georgia, Alaska, Indiana, and Kentucky. Officials in Kansas, Tennessee, Wyoming, and Oklahoma were also sent mail. Other states were Massachusetts, Missouri, and Rhode Island. The packages forced an evacuation in Iowa. Hazmat crews in several states found the material was harmless. It's the second time in the past year suspicious packages were mailed to election officials in multiple states. Several states said a white powder substance was found in envelopes, though in most cases the powder was found to be harmless. There were no reports of injuries. Oklahoma officials said the material sent to the election office there contained flour. The Colorado Secretary of State's office said letters with fentanyl-laced powder were sent to five state election offices last year. Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold says the sender Monday wrote U.S. Trader Elimination Army as a return address. This comes with early voting underway in several states, less than two months ahead of the general election. Election offices across the U.S. have taken steps to boost security for their buildings and workers. Jeremy Sandberg, NTD News. Microsoft says Russian state-backed operatives have stepped up online attacks against Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign. The company says the operatives produce and spread inauthentic videos meant to stoke division in the U.S. NTD's Jeremy Sandberg has a quick summary of Microsoft's report. Microsoft says Russian operatives spread a fake video viewed millions of times. They claim to show Harris supporters attack someone at a Trump rally. The company says another video falsely claimed Harris paralyzed someone in a 2011 hit-and-run accident. Microsoft researchers say Russian operatives pretended to be a local San Francisco media outlet to spread that story. Both videos were still on X Tuesday afternoon. One post of a video had 1.5 million views. U.S. intelligence agencies warned in July Russia planned to covertly use social media to try to sway public opinion on elections in Ukraine. Microsoft says Russian influence operations took time to pivot when President Biden ended his re-election bid. The company says videos attacking Harris and her supporters started spreading late last month. A separate report by Microsoft last month found Iranian regime-backed actors were targeting Trump's campaign and trying to gain access to his inner circle. 
The general manager of Microsoft's Threat Center says the recent focus on Harris is a strategic move to exploit any perceived vulnerabilities. The report comes amid U.S. government action aimed to counter Russian disinformation, targeting American voters during the presidential campaigns. That includes an effort to sanction Russian media outlet RT. Jeremy Sandberg, NTD News. Coming up, former President Trump preparing to undo some legislation. If he returns to the White House, Trump says he'll reverse the tax law, which he signed. GM has sold small, cheap electric vehicles in China for as low as $5,000, which raises the question, why are there no cheap electric vehicles in the U.S.? Find out about that after the break. With Barack Sarmad, an influencer in the cryptocurrency world. Secret Service, they do an excellent job. And uh, they have the man behind bars, and hopefully he's going to be there for a long time. Dangerous person. Trump says he was enjoying the beautiful weather and a peaceful game of golf. All of a sudden we heard shots being fired in the air, and I guess probably four or five. Trump described the moment the would-be assassin was discovered. A uh, Secret Service agent had seen a barrel of a AK-47, which is a very powerful gun, rifle, and uh, he started shooting at the barrel, started shooting in the bushes. The president joked that leaving a good game of golf unfinished is never easy. I would have loved to have sank that last putt, <laughs> but uh, we decided to let's get out of here. And praised the attentive civilian who got the suspect's license plate number. I mean, who would think you could take a thousand times like that? How many people would have the uh, brain power to follow him and not make pictures of the back of his truck? Suspect Ryan Routh was arrested about 40 minutes later, driving north on Interstate 95. Records show a phone associated with Routh was located at the golf course starting nearly 12 hours before the incident. Routh was charged with two gun-related crimes on Monday. The suspect was on the public side of a fence along the golf course's boundary. A Florida state attorney, Dave Arenberg, says other people in the past have taken pictures of Trump while golfing from that same spot, speaking on Fox News. For President, while he's golfing, they've gotten through the shrubs and been able to poke a camera uh, through the fencing. You would think that perhaps maybe uh, they would consider someone scoping the perimeter. Acting Secret Service Director Ronald Rowe says President Biden made it clear he wanted the highest levels of protection for former President Trump in the wake of the July assassination attempt. The Secret Service moved to sustain increases in assets and the level of protection sought. And those things were in place yesterday. FBI Special Agent Jeffrey Veltri says the FBI evidence response team is collecting and processing the evidence. These range from the rifle, which is an SKS model with a scope and obliterated serial numbers, to two bags, the subject's electronics, and what appears to be ceramic tiles. Veltri says DNA has also been collected and sent to Quantico for testing. The FBI agent says the suspect had an active online presence and they are going through his posts. In addition, they're going through media reports and public statements he made that he wanted to recruit Afghan soldiers and others to fight for Ukraine. Routh expressed support for Ukraine in dozens of ex-posts, saying he was willing to die in the fight. He also protested in Kyiv after Russia invaded and even tried to enlist. He was reportedly turned away due to his age and lack of military experience. Daniel Monahan, NTD News. President Biden commends the secret Telling him he planned to seal, he planned to steal this information and give it to to up to organize protests. He arrived in the U.S. in April after visiting Iran. Last week, FBI Director Chris Ray described Merchant's alleged plot as coming straight out of the Iranian regime's playbook. A huge blast today, causing an earthquake-sized explosion in Russia. Ukraine and Moscow have different explanations for what happened. This has tensions between the Kremlin and NATO keep rising. NTD's international correspondent, yeah, Arian Pazgar, has the Russia update. I wow. this video has captured a huge explosion in Russia on Wednesday. The incident took place between Moscow and St. Petersburg. 
The blast was so powerful that monitoring sensors mistook it for a small earthquake in the area. An unverified anonymous Ukrainian source told Reuters the strong blast was due to a Ukrainian drone striking a Russian missile depot. The local governor in Russia, meanwhile, had a different explanation. Unmanned aerial vehicles were shot down and falling debris caused a fire to start. We are now evacuating our population. I don't think so. Russia says at least 13 people have been injured. Satellite images show the scale of destruction after the blast. Also on Wednesday, tensions between the Kremlin and NATO keep rising. The issue still is Ukraine's use of long-range weapons. Russian President Vladimir Putin previously warned that NATO would be crossing a red line by allowing Ukraine to use such weapons. In an interview with the Times published on Tuesday, outgoing NATO head Stoltenberg dismissed Putin's warning. Stoltenberg says there have been many red lines declared by him before, and he has not escalated. The Kremlin responded on Wednesday. His stance on Ukraine potentially striking Russian territory is provocative and dangerous. Stoltenberg's term as NATO chief is set to end in less than two weeks. Arian Pastar, NTD News. Turning now to a major cyber threat, charges against Chinese hacker Xia Wei have been unsealed. Wei is a member of the Chinese military controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. He's accused of hacking a U.S. company just days after it sued a Chinese competitor for stealing trade secrets in 2017. The Department of Justice alleges Wei stole critical information the hack data was connected to the company's military and civilian communication devices. If convicted, Wei faces up to 20 years in prison for wire fraud, plus additional time for charges relating to identity theft. The U.S. has recognized CCP-backed cyber attacks as a top threat to national security. China has announced sanctions on nine U.S. military-linked firms today over U.S. weapons sales to Taiwan. The firm's property inside China would be frozen, and Chinese entities are banned from transacting with these U.S. firms. The firms impacted include Sierra Nevada Corporation and Stick Rudder Enterprise. The measures are effective from today. This comes a day after the U.S. State Department approved a $228 million military sale to Taiwan. The Chinese Communist Party sees Taiwan as its own territory, despite, of course, never having ruled over the island. Washington doesn't have diplomatic ties with the island, but is bound by law to sell weapons to Taiwan so it can defend itself. Beijing has called on the U.S. to refrain from selling these weapons to Taiwan. This May, Beijing sanctioned 12 defense contractors over arms sales to Taiwan, including Lockheed, Raytheon, and General Dynamics. When we come back, Switzerland attempts to make its mark as one of Europe's top wine producers. That's right, Carrie. A closer look at the country's vino up next. We'll